T-minus 10, 9, 8, The clock is seven. operating. We're underway. Tranquility base here. Endeavor. Go. Minus 10, 9, 8, The clock is seven. operating. We're underway. Tranquility base here. Endeavor. Go. Aerogel can be made in several forms. Previously, most aerogels made a hydrophilic, which means it absorbs water. And that makes handling the aerogel very difficult because you have to hermetically seal that. The aerogel we have made here is hydrophobic, which uh, repels water. Just to demonstrate that, you can see it actually floats in water. And uh, it doesn't absorb water. This makes uh, uh, space application very easy. You go to the Cape, you don't have to seal that or, or concern about humidity. Aerogel is made, made of mostly air, probably 99.9% .9 air. Uh, what's remaining is silicon dioxide. And it has a very good insulating properties. Now let me demonstrate to you with this flame here. This is just a piece of uh, paper. Let me, you can see this paper burns. But if I take the same piece of paper and put it on top of this aerogel here, I put this flame under, and it does not burn. And in fact, showing that it's not hot, I can put my hand on it, and it insulates heat very well. Aerogel, although it's very, uh, very fragile, but it very, has very high compressive strength. And let me demonstrate to you, this piece of aerogel weighs about 10 grams. This piece of plexiglass is about 50 grams. The reason I use this is because it will apply even force on it. That's already five times the weight. This is a thousand grams. You could hold it. Now, and it, it, it did not break or collapse. This is another 1,000 grams. It's 2 kilograms. So this is 2,000 times its own weight. Aerogel is a material that's very interesting. The way it's made is that it starts off as a liquid. And it can be cast into a mold of any kind of shape. As it is evidence here, the three letters of JPL logo, and it was cast into a mold and uh, made into aerogel. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 
One of the applications for silica aerogel is for lightweight thermal insulation. We're using uh, solid silica aerogel for the, on the Mars rover program to act as part of our integrated thermal and structural uh, insulation for the Mars rover. Our basic design is to use the silica aerogel in two layers in each of the sidewalls for the warm electronics box for the Mars rover. We then place a layer of gold-coated kapton inside for a thermal emissivity uh, barrier. Here we have the uh, flight sim unit for the Mars rover where, where we already have integrated the silica aerogel into the, into the walls. Uh, one of the unique features that we're able to accomplish with the silica aerogel is an integrated lightweight thermal structural design. We're able to reduce the total system mass for the Mars rover warm electronics box to one kilogram. By using the silica aerogel, we're able to reduce the system mass for the warm electronics box from 2.6 kilograms down to one kilogram. This was very important because the Mars rover is limited to a total of 11 and a half kilograms. Shown here is a full-scale mock-up of the Mars rover, which is scheduled to launch in December of 1996 and to land on the Mars surface in, on July 4th of 1997. Minus 10, 9, 8, the clock is 7, operating. We're underway. Tranquility base here. Endeavor. Go. The Stardust mission is our attempt to reach, reach out in deep space and grab particles from a comet, bring those back to Earth, and analyze those particles. We hope to understand the involvement that comets had in forming our Earth, uh, resulting to uh, what our life is, uh, life forms are like today. Aerogel is a unique material uh, that the Stardust Project relies totally on. Uh, we know that it's, uh, we use these very thin wafers, only about an inch thick or a few centimeters thick, to, that we will stick in the dust stream at the comet. And as these particles are coming from the comet, we will catch those in this aerogel and return the particles from the comet to Earth. As we know, uh, aerogel is the lightest solid material that we have in the world. Even though it is so lightweight, it has a very strong internal strength. This internal strength allows it to survive these high frequency vibrations during liftoff from a, a rocket and also as we return to Earth during the descent and landing. But the primary strength comes when it is bombarded by millions of these dust particles traveling at six times the speed of a bullet where we've done thorough testing where it survives that bombardment. After the spacecraft separates the return capsule and the capsule then lands in the Utah test and training range, we will very gingerly extract this collector arm with the aerogel and send that intact on a plane down to the Johnson Space Center curatorial facility. There, 
we will use a variety of techniques to extract those particles. Uh, some cases we can use uh, tweezers, very fine tweezers to pull those out. And we're also looking at new techniques of using lasers to slice the aerogel down to the point where the particles are to extract those. T-minus 10, 9, 8, The clock is seven. operating. We're underway. That quality is here. Endeavor, go.呈新的任务目的是要到彗星来逮捕它的尘土这个后嘛是三公分 彗星的尘土跟其他星球的尘土，这是第一次用在新蜜蜂到了生态空来做啊逮捕的尘土的一个任务。但是新蜜蜂本身是发明是在一九三二年。新蜜蜂它的化学成分就好像玻璃一样，